My eight-year-old has a rare disease called Shakumari tooth, type 2A. Everything was uh, normal, typical, up until about her second birthday. She hit all of her milestone, crawling, uh, walking, turning over, everything happened on time, so we never suspected anything is different. We reached out to a neurologist. The first diagnosis was not really the accurate one. And we realized that there is more of a progressive growth of the disease. We tried to reach out to Dr. Conklin and we were very fortunate to see a response back because out of sending hundreds of emails to researchers, we didn't hear a lot from many others. It has been a ray of hope. Yeah, there will be a cure soon. Hopefully not too late for Seisha. That was a very good game. That was a very good game. You think about patients and families of patients who've been told that their disease is completely untreatable and then CRISPR comes along. Now we're in a situation where it's not only potentially treatable, it's actually one of the most approachable. There's definitely hurdles that we need to understand, but all of those hurdles, at least in our eyes, are quite doable. That's a tremendous opportunity. Mutations in CMT genes, and particularly Mitofusion 2, the onset could be as young as two years old to probably 70 years old. So it's any time during life. With this mutation, it generally presents early. People who have this disease have what we call a length-dependent neuropathy. The length is from the spine, to wherever it's going. And so there's a loss of function of the longer nerves before uh, the shorter nerves. Essentially, it starts in the feet, difficulty with the strength of the legs, different uh, sensation of the legs, and then that moves up from up to the knees and then starts affecting arms as well. What's that fork? This is called a tuning fork. Oh, I remember you hit it on you again. Yeah. And then it vibrates. Do you want to see how it works? CMT has been an under-recognized disease area. It's not fatal necessarily, but it causes profound disability in kind of the prime active years of their lives. Pretty much everything you think about that kids like to do for fun, a child with CMT may have to do differently or more slowly or may not be able to participate in. I'm trying to get your reflexes. But as I remember from last year, it's a little hard to get your reflexes. At the present moment, the things that I can offer to a patient with CMT are referring them to a physical therapist, orthotic braces to help them walk better, and all those things are, are very helpful, but they're not changing the course of the disease. And so when I speak with patients about clinical trials, we're creating the possibility for changing the disease trajectory. Yeah, one of the challenges of CMT, it's been known for well over a century, there are to this day no treatments. The positive side is the genetic causes of CMT are well known. We kind of know what we have to fix. So when CRISPR came along, we felt also excited about it because the whole goal of CRISPR is to fix issues in the genetic level, which is really the root cause of charcoal tooth. Our family's journey with CMT started about 23 years ago when our son Johan was diagnosed with CMT1A. Like many families with CMT, it was what's called a natural mutation. It was the first in the family. Like most families in this case, it was a shock. That's why we've been involved for the last 23 years, trying to uh, move the ball forward and find solutions for him and everybody else. The patients themselves and their families uh, provide a tremendous energy. My lab in particular is filled with people who want to contribute to helping people with disease, to meet somebody who is that person. And meeting Seisha in particular, she's like superwoman, she can do everything. Her determination to be able to do anything when it's so obvious that it's very difficult for her to do that uh, is, is something that you can't even put into words about how inspiring that is to people who are working on this. 
I do want to thank all the researchers who are working on CMT and even rarer types like type 2A. It means a lot to families like us because when we get such a rare progressive diagnosis, there is no cure, nothing to stop and not even to slow down. It is a very difficult thing to accept. And when you know that there are researchers working on this, that really helps a lot, even in our day-to-day -day life. Seeing your child losing the abilities but at the back of your mind, you know, there is hope. It's so, so valuable. I can never put that into words. We are just so grateful for everyone working on this.